Every four years, America's top job is up for grabs. With each new election comes a new batch of candidates with compromising foreign policy credentials. When they ask me who's the president of you, Becky, 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 Stan, Stan, I'm going to say, you know, I don't know. Do you know? I'm afraid that it's a very hard struggle, particularly given the situation on the Iraq-Pakistan border. You can actually see Russia from land here in Alaska. Well, Africa was a country on the brink on the brink of uh, complete meltdown and chaos. Geographically illiterate U.S. candidates have supplied comedians with endless material. But all jokes aside, some presidential hopefuls vying to lead the world's most powerful armed forces know very little about America's military interventions. So you agreed with President Obama on Libya or not? Okay, Libya. Forming a cohesive sentence on geopolitics can be a struggle. I do not agree with the way he handled it for the following reason. Um, no, that's, that's a different line. Differentiating between friends and enemies, also a challenge. Obviously, got to stand with our North Korean allies. In the case of Republican candidate Mitt Romney, mixing up presidents and prime ministers can be common. I think uh, President Putin represents a real threat uh, to the... Um, uh, stability and peace of the world. The overarching ignorance on international affairs has caused American political commentator Bill Maher to conclude... I, I think anybody could be president in this dumb f country. Okay. <laughs> sort of like at this point now, where I think if you're going to be... When you register to be a candidate, you also have to go take a test about foreign affairs. And if you fail the test... We might get you one chance to take it again. And then I'm saying, sorry, go run, you know, uh, for city council in your little town in Alaska. If a country with the world's highest national GDP sure is being represented success. by politicians with a deficit on international affairs, the biggest consequence is likely to be America's credibility around the world. And even who we target. And let me finish with this. I'm, I'm just, I get lost in a blizzard of words there. This is where it gets really dangerous for the United States of America. It, it's like, wait a minute, how could they possibly be right about terrorism? How could they be right about North Korea? How could they be right about Iran's so-called nuclear program when their candidate doesn't even know that there's a North and South Korea? I think the U.S. is lying. And so then the world has this very paranoid view of the United States because of the candidates not understanding basic facts or understanding basic principles of international law, which unequivocally prohibit torture. If I were president, I would be willing to use waterboarding. I think it was very effective. It gained information for our country. The consistent streak of foreign policy blunders made by U.S. presidential hopefuls is quite humorous. But it could also be considered a national tragedy if most candidates campaigning to be leader of the so-called free world simply don't know enough about the world outside of America's borders. Marina Portnaya, RT, New York. What's up with these sorry politicians? Lots of bark. When it's showtime, whimpering like little shih tzus. You want big cuts? Ron Paul's been screaming it for years. Budget crisis? No problem. Cut a trillion bucks year one. That's trillion with a T. Department of Education? Gone. Interior, energy, HUD, commerce? Gone. Later, bureaucrats. That's how Ron Paul rolls. Want to drain the swamp? Ron Paul. Do it. I'm Ron Paul, and I approve this message.